Hi internet friends, my name is John and welcome to episode 12 of my series of how to create a website using Umbraco V8. Now in this video we're going to be talking about the super important topic of performance. Now performance really does matter. Ask my wife. Hey! Now what we're going to do in this video is talk about the more Umbraco specific features of how you can make your pages load faster. So we're going to be talking about things like the client dependency framework, we're going to be talking about cache partial, we'll be looking at how we can add things to the cache. Now if that sounds good to you, let's crack on with the content. Before I forget, hit that subscribe button, click it now, be a legend, I do weekly YouTube videos on web development and Braco, this sort of stuff, hit subscribe, be a legend. We are going to kick things off by looking at the two ways that you can apply caching on a page level. Now, as you can see, no expenses have been spared again on my designs. What you'll see in the screen in front of you is this output cache enabled value and this cached value right here. Now, if I refresh the page, what you'll notice is that the non-cache versions are updating. As you'd expect, cache versions aren't. Now, these two cache values are actually being cached in a slightly different way. So what we'll do is go through and look at the code and seeing how this is working. We are inside of the route hijacked controller of that page that you just saw. And what we're going to do is look at the output cache to kick things off with. Now, the output cache is probably your go to tool when you're thinking about caching using Umbraco. And this is because it's going to make things much quicker. What's going to happen is someone's going to make a normal page request. The HTML is going to be rendered. And then on the way out, the HTML is going to be put into the output cache. On any subsequent requests, the HTML is going to, from the cache is going to be used and returned. This means that the server is going to be able to process more things. And it also means that pages will load quicker. Now, what we're going to do is enable the output cache. And this is done using the imaginatively titled output cache attribute. Now, the most common way I see the output cache being used on online tutorials is using duration. Now, duration takes in seconds. So this is an hour hoping my math's right there. Now this is rubbish. Do not do this. The problem with this example is imagine you have 20 or 30 controllers. You then decide to change the cache time from one hour until 30 minutes. You're now going to have to refactor 20 or 30 classes, figure out everywhere it's used. You do not want to do this. Instead, you want to set up a cache profile. So within your web config, what you can do is within system.net, system web, you can copy in this amazing config. If you look in the article linked below, you'll find out how to do this. The important thing to note here is this cache profile. So I'm going to copy this key. Now this key is something I've created. It can be whatever you want to call it. It doesn't make a difference. Now you can see my cache is enabled. It's set to cache for an hour. And I've also got this vary by param thing. If you've got any pages that you don't want to cache or you've got like cookies or anything like that, this is a thing that you'll need to look at. So if you've got a membership area and you've got areas that you don't want to cache, I recommend that you research this. Going back to our controller, we can now use our cache profile by typing in cache profile, typing in that key. Amazing, we've got some caching. Now, obviously this is still fairly duplication heavy. If we have to copy this on every single controller that we want to apply caching, that's still not ideal. So instead, what we can do is create a base controller. If I scroll down here to save you from the pains of me live coding, what we can see is we've just applying this attribute onto a base controller. And now applying it here means that this controller is now all cached. This is amazing. This is probably the way that I recommend that you do stuff. Using the output cache, we now have a way to cache either the entirety of our controller or just an individual action. We can further enhance our caching domination by looking at how we can start caching our partial views. So on the screen right in front of me, as you can see right here, I'm rendering a partial using the normal ASP.NET, nothing clever here. Now underneath it, we can see the cached partial helper. Now this is probably one of my all time favorite HTML helpers. Yes, I do have one. And this is a Umbraco specific helper. Now the inputs are pretty similar as the normal ASP.NET one. However, one thing you'll notice is we're passing in a duration. So this will be the cache time. So again, in seconds, one hour. Now when we're using the cached partial helper, you need to sort of consider how the cache works. 
So the cache is using this partial view as the key. So this means that as soon as this code runs once, no matter where you call this code anywhere else on any different document types, you're going to get the same results for the next hour. If, however, you want the partial to work on a per page basis, you can use this overload right here. So if I do a comma, as you can see, we've got this cache by page key. So if we put it by true, this means that the helper will work on a per page basis. This is quite nice. Now, one thing you need to be aware of is that you can't use this to use different caching on the same page. So underneath what you can see is we've also got another example of cached partial. We're using exactly the same view this time. The only difference is we're passing in a completely different view model. And the difference is years should be one hour in front. Now, if we look on our web page, as you can see here, we've got cached and cached again, and these values are exactly the same. So it's just something to be aware of when you're using this helper because it can uh, catch you out once in a while. We're now going to look at how we can further enhance the front end experience. So we're going to look at how we can add some caching, some bundling and some minification into our CSS and our JavaScript files. So again, Umbreco comes out of the box with something which is really useful that we can use and it's called the Client Dependency Framework or CDP. Now this plugin extension comes installed out of the box. It's written by a guy called Shannon Demonic. So he's also done some stuff like um, examine articulate, which is another good plugin, which I recommend you check out. So he's done a load of good stuff. Now going through the documentation, it's very um, comprehensive and really easy to understand. So when you want to add in some CSS to get bundled up and cached, you just wrap it in this require CSS. The same for the JavaScript. So we just put in some requires JS. And you can also cache the whole folder if you want to make things much easier for yourself by just doing requires a CSS folder or requires a JavaScript folder. So let's have a look at how this works in our code. So going back to our caching controller, I've got a using statement right at the top here. And our using statement is client dependency core MVC. Again, this package comes out of the box when we install in Braco. So this is all you need to do. It's very simple. Scrolling down to the bottom, you can see I've got some includes. So I'm adding in a JavaScript file, some CSS, and I'm importing this whole folder. So just so you can have a look at it, if I go back up here, you can see I've got a folder full of CSS in there. Now, if I go to my layout, so this is the layout you can see to render the CSS, all you need to do is add this tag in. So it's a render CSS here. And then to render the scripts at the bottom, I've got this render JavaScript here. Next, let's have a look at our website. So if we do a refresh, reload, and then, oh, I missed it. There we go. Now, if I do a reload, you can see that I've got this dependency handler here. And this is bundled up all my JavaScript for me. So if I do another refresh, I should hopefully get the CSS version as well. Perfect. And the nice thing about this is it's very simple to add in some bundling. Now, the cool thing is as well that it's also got a little bit of caching and it uses something called a cache busting system. So as you can see here, we've got this thing called CDV, which is the client dependency version. And this this big number here. So if you're using this and you find that your CSS or JavaScript files aren't updating, what you can do, which will help you out, is go back to your solution in Solution Explorer, go to config. In here, you can see that we have this client dependency config. This is how it's um, all configured. Now in here, what we can do is change this version to one or a, a lower version. And then we can go back to our, our web page. And when we do the reload, as you can see here, hopefully our cache key is now at one. And this means that our cache has been bust and our CSS and JavaScript should load as expected. The final type of caching we're going to talk about is data caching. Now, what happens if you need to perform an expensive query and you want to cache that result? Now, luckily, Umbreco comes with another useful tool that you can use out of the box, and this is the application cache. Let's see how we can use it in code. So heading back to Visual Studio, what you can see is we're injecting this app caches helper. Now, unfortunately, if we do a peek on definition, it does not use an interface, so we cannot use our beautiful solid principles. It would be amazing if it did use an interface. However, we can still use constructor injection, so I'm happy. 
Now, when we pass in the cash, you'll have access to three different types of cash. So you have runtime cash, which is the one that we're probably interested in, which is more like a global level cash. We have the request cash, which is all about requests. And we have an isolated cash, which is for more packages and stuff. Let's not go into like what the ins and outs of everything is. Let's just focus on we need a runtime cache. Now, runtime cache is a bit intuitive how you add things into it. Now, you might expect that you'd find an add or an insert. However, this isn't the case. So to add something into the cache, we need to use get cache item. And what happens is we pass in a key. We can type it using T if we really want to. And we've also got this second overload. Now, this second overload is using a func. And what it's going to say is if this doesn't exist, add this value into the cache instead. So for shits and giggles, all we're doing is adding a value which is six years into the future. Now to render the data out of the cache, we do exactly the same thing. So it's only one line to remember, simple. So we've got our runtime cache, got a get cache item, and we're passing in our key. So let's have a look at how that looks in the front end. And as you can see, we've got this data cache, which is the value which is coming out of the cache. And as you can see, it's six years in the future. Huzzah, it's all working. So again, this is another level of cache that you should add and think about. So it's just one of those things which is going to help make your pages load that a little bit quicker. So did you know about all those different caches that you can use in Braco? So we have the output cache, we have cache partial, we have the client dependency framework, and we also have app cache. So I'm hoping you learned something new from this video. If you got something out of it and you want to be an absolute legend, please hit that subscribe button. I would very much appreciate it. If you'd like to learn about Umbraco, I've also finally finished my Umbraco book. It's 9.99. It's called Umbraco Secrets Exposed. It's all about how to build a, an Umbraco website using V8. It's kind of similar to these videos, except for, you know, it's probably a bit more in depth. It's only 9.99. So if you want to help me out and support this channel, go over to Lean Pub and buy a copy. Link below. If you want to do me a solid and you want to trick YouTube into showing this video to more people, hit that like button because I'd very much appreciate it. Otherwise, I hope you learned something. I hope you have a great day. Happy coding.